Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Pop of Color Late Night Show, a music business themed late night talk show for colorful bands and artists. I'm your host, Claire Chiron, and tonight we are going to be talking about mailing lists in the music world. But first, let's get to the news. Okay, news piece number one, I want to get straight to it, is new Spotify stats are out. So this is according to the CFO, 50% of active Spotify users convert to the paid level. They haven't mentioned when they do that, but that is good that eventually there is that conversion because that means that artists are finally get, will get paid a higher amount, which they cannot be if the majority of streaming service users are on the free tier. 72% of streams are for the top 200,000 artists, whereas the remaining 28% of all streams are 1.8 million artists, to give you an idea of where that falls on a scale. Labels are pushing Spotify to charge more per monthly subscription, but Spotify doesn't think that that is the right move for them. They've got 180 million monthly active users in 65 countries and 83 million premium subscribers. And, oh, and 35 million plus tracks across the platform. The second piece of news I want to discuss is a little bit more nuanced than just remembering some stats and writing them down. This is about the European Parliament giving the go ahead to their new Article 13. So basically, it's been dubbed the upload filter and what it is, is a kind of filter when you upload, yes, thanks, Clara, but when you're trying to upload something to the World Wide Web, there is a filter in place to check to see if it's already a copyrighted work belonging to someone else. So the idea is I would not be able to upload a pirated movie and someone else wouldn't be allowed to upload PDF version of an ebook where they can just give it away for free if someone else wrote it. That sort of thing. Think of when you're on YouTube and all those really cheap cheap looking fan made lyric videos with papyrus font. Those wouldn't be allowed. That's the idea to protect copyrighted works so that it would be the original copyright holder getting all the streams, all the views, lose all the attention on their page and therefore the revenue. But what happened um, in the last those two weeks was it kind of backfired spectacularly for a pianist, James Rhodes. He uploaded a video that he filmed in the living room of him playing Bach music on the piano. Uh, he uploaded it to Facebook and immediately got a copyright notice from Sony Music Entertainment saying they owned 45 seconds of that and it's copyright infringement. What? Bach, for those of you who are not familiar with classical music, has been dead for 250 some years. That's public domain. They are, they have no right on this, but because somewhere in Sony Music's catalog, they have an artist who did a cover rendition, their own version of, some, of the same piece, it got flagged as copyright. So Sony and the Little pianist James had to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and it was only because of public outcry and pressure that Sony finally was like, yeah, okay, we don't own classical this classical piece, which kind of leaves a negative taste when it comes to false copyright flags. This is, this new article, Article 13, the upload filter, has been compared to you know YouTube's content ID system or Facebook's content ID system? The fingerprint matching in the sense of they check to see if that if anything has been taken from something else like that, but much bigger across government instead of private corporations. 
So I can I can see the right idea, and I can see we can all see from this example of what happened in the last couple of weeks of how it could go wrong as well. So I would like you to weigh in in the comment section, and please let me know what you think is the right decision. And should they go ahead with this law or not? What revisions would you put in place if you could stand up and have a say? If you are living in Europe and this is going to be something that impacts you, please write to your member of parliament. Sorry, I've had an exhausting week. It's um, my city's folk festival, which takes place, is close by to me. So I had a media pass and I was a lot of running around to do. The kittens have been happily adopted, for those of you who've been following the saga of my foster kittens. They are all in happy forever homes and I'm so happy for them and Louise is currently sleeping in what used to be their bed. Um, okay. <laughs> Anyways, on to the main feature of t tonight's show, mailing lists. So let's start at the very beginning. What is a mailing list? That would be the email newsletter or mailing list, email list, what have you call it, that you, that an artist or any company or small business, that would be you, sends out to their fans um, into their email inbox. Why do you need one? Because social media comes and goes, but what do fans use to sign up for the next one? Their email address. Wouldn't you rather have that email address? The, a tweet lasts 45 seconds on an average news feed. An email lasts uh, longer than that in an inbox. People can save it, they can sort it, they can look for it. So it's best to have, and it gives you direct access to your fan where you can know if they opened it or not by looking into the analytics of that, that um, subscriber. So I think I am a firm believer in the power of mailing lists. In fact, there is a link to subscribe to mine below in the comments of this video. Please do so you can see it in action. So what would you send slash what would you say? So the idea is you want to provide value for your fans. You're not just signing, it's not just a sign up and then you never speak to them, but it's not just a you show up only when you want something. We all know and aren't very happy with that one friend who only calls you up when they want to borrow money. Same idea. Uh, be the, the on-brand friend in their inbox who provides value, whether that be someone who gives motivational messages, someone who tells stories, someone who shares book reviews, or just updates on their life in a friendly way. Okay? even when you don't have anything to plug in and out, such as a show, such as a, an album release, for example. Uh, how often you should send it is up to you. I wouldn't do fewer than every three months because or else really people do forget that our attention spans are so short, it's easier to break something up into once a month, month sending, once every two weeks sending, then sending a humongous thing, thing every far away distant, bleh, you know what I'm trying to say, distant. So for example, with my email, I used to send it once a month. I had so much and it turned out so long that I changed it to once every two weeks. And now I've decided to change it to once a week because it is much easier or two for fans when they open it up to know exactly what I want them to do opt-in wise. No, call to action wise. That is the word, C-T-O, call to action. So this would be you asking a fan to do something, you know, click this button to buy the tickets to my show or click here to pre-save on Spotify my new EP when it comes out. Asking what you're asking them to do. If you have a bunch of them going in different directions, it can be confusing and it can be less efficient for your goal of this newsletter. How to set one up. Uh, you need an email service provider. I'm going to go into the legalities of this in the second bit of 
this presentation, but yes, please use the service provider. I use MailChimp personally, but there's a bunch of others. I just chose MailChimp at the beginning because it was free and I quite like it. But there's also ConvertKit. I believe HubSpot also does a mailing list service. But yes, please look in to what works best for you. And lastly, opt-in ideas. You're asking your fans to give their email addresses and not everyone is cool with that. Sure, the super fans might definitely be, but for people who don't know you quite yet, lukewarm fans, and you wanna draw them in and make them bigger fans of you, you need to have something, well, you don't need to, but it's very much recommended that you have something that is going to convince them to give their email as an exchange. So in the good old days of the early 2000s, it used to be MP3 downloads of the songs because like that, it was free. Well, nowadays everyone has streaming. So if those same songs are available on, on, the, on a streaming platform, there's no point. If you have songs that aren't available on the streaming platform, you can use those. Anything that you can give them exclusive access is always very good. Upgrades to things they like, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I really want to make an article where it's, where it's just lists a bunch of freebie opt-in ideas for, for artists to suggest to their fans in exchange for email addresses. Please let me know in the comments below if that's something you would be interested in me working on because that would be fun. So let's quickly go over the legalities and some do's and don'ts for mailing lists. So first, anti-spam laws. You need to look up your country's anti-spam laws. In Canada, it would be CASEL, Canadian Anti-Spam Legislation. And if you're in the US, in the UK, any other country, look up yours to make sure you're not doing anything dodgy. Use a service provider. This is both making your life easier because then you don't, instead of copy and pasting every single email on your mailing list into your to um, line on, on an email, you can have the, what the service provider does is it keeps them all in a spreadsheet and then you just select, select that mailing list to send it all to as well as if you start sending to many, many people on a regular basis emails, your email provider, such as Gmail, can flag you for spam and you're going to get um, dinged or penalized or just in generally in trouble with Gmail, with Yahoo, with Hotmail, all of those. So please use a service provider. Don't harvest addresses. If someone hasn't clearly given you their consent to being on your email list, don't add them to your email list. So if you are an artist who's seeking to get media coverage, what you shouldn't do is go to each and every blog, blogger's contact us page, age, copy and paste their email and add it to, their e to your own email list. That's called email ha harvesting, email digging, email trading. There's a bunch of names for it. Don't do it. It's shady. It can be illegal in some places. Don't buy email lists or sell them because those people did not agree to, to be on your list. If you are someone who's going to pay someone to set up your email list service and, and find leads for you, you're still on the hook if they start operating shady. So just, just be ethical. Let people know what they're signing up for. Don't trick anyone. Don't copy and paste their emails. Don't steal a bunch of emails from a contact page on a website, okay? Have a clear unsubscribe button. Hint, if the only way for someone to unsubscribe from your mailing list is to mark you as spam, you're probably doing something wrong. Really, just that's the whole point of a mailing list. It's you can unsubscribe from it. You're not going back and forth. However, you need to use a real email address when you're doing this because some people will answer straight away. It's, 
way with questions, with comments. So that's good. You don't want to throw that into the void. Don't send attachments if you can avoid it because A, those bog down people's email inboxes to say if they're on a limited data and they're outdoors and bam, they're suddenly downloading a bunch of photos that they didn't ask for. That's not a good way to make friends. As well as people can be suspicious of viruses and things might not convert very well from one format to another. What you want to do if you're sending attachments, whether they be MP3s, whether they be um, photos or PDF files, is have a download link on your website hidden that you can link them directly through to, and then you can see how many people go make the link, make the jump from opening your email to clicking the button to downloading. So you can see who your most loyal fans are because that's a great way to track when it comes to crowdfunding campaigns down the line as well. I uh, just want to briefly mention the address thing. Another thing that is required legally here in Canada and I believe in the US as well is you need to put your business address at the bottom of the email. So either get, if you are not comfortable putting your own email, putting your own postal address as it would be good to rent a PO box or find an alternate a alternative address that would work in case you're afraid of safety reasons and that's always good if you've got issues with stalkers that might be a very good option for you when it comes to the subject line of your email uh, avoid using the exclamation point all caps xxx or free because that can trigger off spam filters and get you flagged for spam provide value once again don't just ask for stuff don't be that friend who just shows up asking for money asking for favors every single time and make sure you provide value to your readers to your subscribers however it is you do it, whether it be with discounts, whether it be with exclusive access to things, whether it be just making them feel special and that you appreciate them. And finally, routinely prune your list. Yes, having a big number is great, but it's great for bragging rights and not much else. So there's no point of having a big list if only a small part percentage of them are actually opening your emails, clicking the links, and buying things, or caring about you. That's an, another reason why you don't want to harvest emails, because these people don't care about you. you. Especially when you get into larger numbers and the longer lists, when you get more and more fans, you're going to have to start paying email service providers to host all this information to keep it safe, to keep it encrypted. So, you, if you can prune your list routinely to the people who haven't opened an email in six months, just you can either delete them or send an email to the people who haven't opened in more than six months, more than eight months, more than three months. Hey, you, you don't seem interested. Are you, do you still want to be on this list? And then delete them after, depending on the result of that. It would go a lot further. It would save you money. It would... It would keep your conversion great and making you happy and it would make you feel a lot more loved. So there we go. I just wanted to talk about email lists for this episode. I've got a bunch of links in the description, both to the news, to some freebies, to my own email list so you can check it out. Once again, my name is Claire Chiron. I run the Pop of Color blog as well as this late night show. Please have a good week. Be good to each other. I'll see you next time.